Who have already used Angular 1? Who have already used Angular 1? Sorry, So basically, this chart will be a bunch of examples that will, will present with it the core concepts of Angular 2. Okay. So I will show you just the examples that we will try to run and understand the code behind them. We'll do a simple hello world, data binding, structural directives, dependency injection, HTTP, nested components, and routing. So let's get started. So Angular 2 is a JavaScript framework to build single page applications, and it's also here to enhance HTML. There is a boiler plat that will expose the structure of an Angular 2 application. I will try to explain it rapidly. Basically, this is all what you need. We have the Angular 2 concepts, the router, the HTTP, and Rx to do observables and promises during the HTTP calls. We also use system to handle the physical dependency between components. So Angular 2 basically is all about components. And an Angular application is a set of components that they are defined with an, a relation of hierarchy. Okay? So let's jump to the code and see the first components and what it looks like. This is the component. Well, we can see this. We import it. And here we can expose. I don't know that you see all the list, but you can see the decorators and what we can add to our components. But basically, we have the selector and a template. In all the examples, we use this syntax. We won't use any template URL because it's a simple overkill. Okay? So to run the first example, we have the bootstrapping phase. And basically, we, we select the component that we want to run. Okay? And if we will go to the index.html, we are selecting our bootstrapping phase. So let's get started now. So basically, you just need to npm start. We have a good command that will do all the tasks for us, compile TypeScript down to ES5 so that we can run it. And we, there will also a node server will be listening to every change so that we, can, we, we don't need to refresh the browser. It's running. We can jump to our component to see the syntax. So basically, this is the selector. And using this selector in our index.html, we can use it. So my app. This is exactly how to call our component in our templates. And this is the template that we return. And here we are. So this is the first example, a simple component that exposes a template that is displayed to the client. The second one, we have data binding. OK, data binding is the fact of data communication between the component and the DOM. And we will expose four types, interpolation, one-way data binding, event binding, and two-way data bindings. What we need to do is to bootstrap the right model. OK, we will choose that. We'll save it. Good will do the job for us, so we don't need to refresh anything. And now we'll try to explain what's going on. OK, so this is interpolation. And it, if we jump to our components, we have a name, a paragraph, a color, and input disabled states. And here in the constructor, the component has a state, a life cycle, on initialization step, we initialize all these attributes. So we give a name, a color, a paragraph, and we set the, the property of is input disabled to true. And here we can see the syntax. 
So this is interpolation. If I'm familiar with Angular 1, this is basically the same thing. The second one is binding to, dire, to attribute directly. So a lot of ng directives that we used in Angular 1 was deleted. So we, expo we, we interact directly with our DOM. So the style is an attribute that we know. That's background. Okay, this will bind to the color, as you can see here, which is green. And inner text, which is a property, you just need to understand and to know HTML5. And also disabled property of an input. A click events, so you can see now the syntax of the click between round brackets. And when we click, we will execute this function. We will see what which we do. And some events, click events, mouse enter, mouse leave. And the two ways that are binding. Two ways that are binding, you can see the syntax. This is what we call banana in the box. And this is how to achieve two ways that are binding. So we have the data which are in our components and we can uh, transfer it to the DOM. And from the DOM to components, the two components also, we can do, do it in the two ways. And let's see now the example. Sorry. Uh, so this is the text that we were binding using interpolation. This is the property that we were setting to false. The click event will toggle the property. As you can see now I can type. Mouse event, you know, to, to change the style property. And of course the famous two way data bindings. We can always do it. Okay, let's jump to the next example. I will try to do, to do it quickly because we don't have time. If we don't have time, we'll try to stop at a uh, given example. You just need to, to tell me on the rest. So structural directives are directives that will interact with your view, with your DOM, such as ng4, ngf, ng switch, and things like that. The syntax is a little bit different from Angular 1, but it's basically the same. Again, we will choose that for bootstrapping. Save, and we will jump to, to explain that rapidly. Okay, so this is basically the syntax. We have an app component, we are exposing an array of talkers. An array of talkers, and here we are looping through them with chat in each talker. We will, what we do, what we call filtering. Now it's called piping in Angular 2 which simply, we want this data to be exposed as a JSON in the view. This is basically what this pipe do. Okay, and NGF, as you know. All the, the structural directives start with an asterisk. Okay, so this is important. Okay, let's see the example. And here we are. We have all the data in the view as JSON and Effectively, we have more than five speakers. The condition was true. So let's go to the next example. Now it's all about services and dependency injection. Again. Choose the correct one. And let's jump. In the last example, we have this talker is hard coded in the components, which is basically not the role of the components. There is no separation of concerns. We cannot reuse this set of information. And to do that, we can also relate it to a service. Now we will introduce what is a service in Angular 2. There is no factory service value constant that we know in Angular 1, simple class that we export it with an annotation, which we call injectable decoration, and we will see it. So here we are. So this is basically a service in Angular 2. This is injectable. As a decorator, we say this is injectable. And this is the function that we return. Okay, how to use now a service? We just need to import it, as I marked here. Sorry, the view is not adaptable. I hope that you are seeing what I see here. The first step is to import it. You remember the system GS do it for us. All the, the physical dependency, you don't need to, to handle that. You don't need to add anything to your index.html. 
just like using with back, to require GS, things like that, it's already done. The second thing is that you should add it in your provider, as a provider, so that you can use it. And the third step, which is here where we are, which in the place where it's injected in the constructor when we do it, basically this implicitly define an instance for your service and it will be ready for use. So in the init state, step four, we can now initialize the chalkers. And if we go to the demo, so here we are, we have the same list of chalkers. Remember, there were no change in the view. So the first example, now that we have a service, it's good, but in most of the case we interact with REST APIs or servers in general to fetch data and that's what will lead us to HTTP and data. So, the same data is now in a file, a JSON file, okay? We have now a chalker. This is just to give it a model. Again, this is two properties, name and topic. If you have seen in the third example, I have used any, which is a type in TypeScript. I won't want to enter into details, but any is like auto, any type. Now I am given a specific type, to be more precise. Okay, this is a chalker. This is a service. Basically the same thing. Now we are using HTTP. First of all, we, we import what we need from the HTTP model core, which is injected, which is added in the index.html. So basically we need the HTTP service and the response service. Now they are injected, as we can see, the, we will use the HTTP, so it's injected here. And now we will define our function that we will get, the, the speakers. So this is basically our endpoint, which will fetch the JSON file simply, and we will map it, to, we will map the response to the worker, to the, to, sorry, to the talker array, which is defined we will return its time. Okay, so this is basically, it's, it's gonna be the last example. So what basically I want, to, I want to say is that it will return an observable, and this observable, we can subscribe to it in our components. So when we subscribe to our observable, we have two, two, two different things either success or error, and in the success case, we will just initialize our chalkers that will be available on the view. I will just run it to see if there is any error that will also be uh, binded to the error. So we synchronize, okay, so this is HTTP and data, and now we are, we are fetching the same data, but using an HTTP request, using observables. The difference between observables and promises, as a last thing, is that observables, it, give, it gives you more control on the asynchronous call, you can cancel it, and you, it's, you can do a lot of, bunch of other things. And RxJS, it comes with a lot of things that you can manipulate your data, mapping, filtering, and doing a lot of, a, other cool stuff. So basically, it will be the end of this talk. I'm sorry, I don't have time to go through all the details. It was planned. I knew that it was not. It will not be easy to do them all. So thank you for your patience and for your, for listening. Do you have any question? I will, I will just show the routing part. Yeah. And I will explain how it works. Yeah. So basically we will go to the boots, okay. Basic routing, no parameter, no feature parameter, just simple pages to route from page to another. So we have now a chalker page by default, which is selected, and now we can see the URL. So basically that's what you need in single page application. And we can go to organizers. And how that work, work is we have the router, that we have to import here. 
this is our own component. So we have to import directives and the route provider. And our component, we have to say, okay, there is two directives that you will have. Sorry, a router directives. This router directive encapsulates two main directives, which are the router link and the router outlet. So the router link, and when the user click, it will direct him to the given to the given view and vice versa. And the content of the components that will be selected will be injected where? Here. Using this directive. And how to configure that? We have a router route config, which we have to import it also, import it here from the router module. I will just hide that so that you can see it. See it, I'm sorry. And here you specify your tags. You also have the talker, the name. So this is the name that we use here. And this is the components that will be injected. So basically, the HTML of this component, the template of this component, or template URL of it, and use as default, as, as you saw, the talker component was used by default, and its template was printed <coughs> on the screen, and the organizers. It's easy to pass parameters, and you just need to inject, or sorry, to import, to import router params, and you can also import the router to navigate, for example, when you click navigate to that state, or on initialization, get the ID, use a service to get a user by ID and print it to on the screen. You can do things like that easily. Thanks very much. Any other question? Yes, in fact, I'm basically not a front end developer, but I was interested in building SPAs. Uh, Angular 2 gives you everything you need from you know, all the stack. You know, uh, you can do server application, routing, uh, dependency injection. Dependency injection itself, you can see it as a framework and a design pattern that is very important. You don't need to use another framework or things like that to, to handle it. It gives you testing, animations, pipes, and it's complete. You don't need to use another library or depend to add other things. Strong community also, this is very important. And in, in, in this area, uh, in the industry, they are using it a lot. And that's what gives it a real boost. And Angular 2 is all about components. It's similar to React. And Unfortunately, we didn't see the nested components, how we can nest our components, how we can communicate between components, and this is the most important part, but it's, it's a little bit advanced, I think. So it's similar a little bit to React now. Yes. You seem to know uh, all Ungrawan. Yes. Uh, and Ungrawan has a wide success. Do you think, do you think uh, Ungra 2 will have the same success as Ungrawan? Yes, I think so. Why? Because there are a lot of companies that are behind it. And you know, the mode, how we, we are now, how we are now developing web applications is involved rapidly. Because yesterday we used a lot of other structures and architecture, you know, in VC architecture, and uh, when the server do any, everything. Now with SPAs, there is a lot of work to do, and a lot of other companies that are still running old applications using, I don't know, uh, a stack, PHP stack, or it's, I don't say that it's not good, but you know, there, are, there isn't this separation. And when people will discover SPAs, I think one of their choices, this will be Angular. And Angular 2 is now maintainable. Angular 1 is recommended for production. But I think that Angular 2 will be the future. Performance, mobile also, one of the motivations. Angular, Angular 1 is not 100% the right choice for mobile. Now, I, as you see, data binding is now more light, more quick, and interaction with the DOM is, is easy, and you gain a lot of performance on that, so it's now a good choice for mobile. And these motivations can, you know, can, uh, can let uh, the industrial companies to, to use on Any other question? So thank you again for your patience and for listening.